yes, 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 yes. They're, they're believing. Maybe I'm just not worthy. Maybe I'm just not worth it. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Why do I keep sinning? What would you what would you tell that person? How would you uh, ease their mind? It's a struggle. Right. You're not alone. I think many people who believe in God find themselves in this place at some point of your walk. You're walking, but you are the man with the withered hand. Um, you're trying to strive to reach perfection but just can't touch it you, you just can't get your hand on it you're like on the edge of it but can't obtain it and I, I, I think the one thing that you have to see is that in, in that story he calls him from the back of the room uh, to walk through the crowd of the room to get to the front of the room and then be held hands with the God of the room is that you're always going to be judged by them in your mind first uh, but know when he get to the front is that he stretches out his hand before he gets healed the the, the problem is you don't struggle with sin you, your mind has not comprehended sin is not what you fight and and if and if we are to be a believer then I need you to believe not only in the form of praying, but in the power that before you were able to make the form, that God answered that prayer and then died for you. And now if he died for your sins, then he died for them, period. That there would be no more of a sacrifice required of you to give rather than to live. He said, I've, I've come that you have life and have it more abundantly. It's not abstract for the next side, but in retraction of everything that we push off for that side on this side, that you can live free, be free, that you don't have to be uh, held down to your past or your sin or your shame. Like you free you first and then live in freedom. And then very last thing about that is that know that the problem he has with the very first church is they lost their first place of love, of being a childlike love. I don't know if you can go back to when you first heard his voice or first received him. It comes from a pure place where he'll meet you exactly where you are. And I know him to be an intimate God because he stops, he stops the entire church service. Now that's big. Because like preachers don't do that. Priests don't do that. And you won't really find too many people allowing them to be interrupted by a silent person who is in shame, but you call their name. Like he has a crowd. Big place. Other preachers there, he calls him, come down here. That God will highlight you if you would humble you and and don't hide it, but <laughs> don't hide it, but, but note that you struggle with it. Is that his hand is over his heart, but it's wilted. Like from the years of past pain and hurt, and it just shared okay, just yeah. for a few. His his hand is on his heart because his heart hurts. It, his heart hurts because he's in a place where people can look at him but look through him is that they, they see him but don't know him they would receive him but not perceive him it's like we're always at the back of it and i'm talking today to somebody who finds themselves in this just place where i can be with them and still feel alone where like they I, they can be talking to me and still talking above me around me or at me is I, I need to feel it so my hand is over my heart. Your heart hurts because you're going to church and still can't get any relief there. And so to that person, I say, God can call you anywhere. You, you don't have to be in the front. You don't have to have a title. You don't have to be on the pulpit. You don't have to sing. But just show up and know that when you identify what you struggle with, that he'll call you beyond that and around them. He has to walk through what is it, the mist of. Mist is suspended water in air. Know that your walking is anointed that you'll get through it. That there's nothing that stands between you and God when you come to a humble place of being like, God, this is just what I struggle with. It's not my hand, it's my heart. It's not, not, not just my heart, it's the whole me. Where God, like, I don't just put stuff on the altar about me. I bring the whole me. Change me. Fix me. God, deliver me. Uh, sometimes I need God to fix me because I'm the problem. And the problem is if we stay in a stagnant place, we'll never experience grace for ourselves. We'll always be talking about it, but we won't ever walk to it to experience it. So God becomes somebody on the pulpit that I'm not intimate with because I never get up to seek him. Answer the call. Whatever he's called you to do, be it live life answer. 
be, be, be it spend more time with the kids, answer. Be it to cook more, be it to clean more, be, be, be it to build something. Just answer the call and know that when you get there, he'll never leave you alone. A lot of times you have to walk alone, walk. You gotta walk and they'll look, walk. Walk with no support, walk. But when you get there, to that place where God, I've reached my plateau. I, I can't go anymore. I need some help, I need support from somebody. Know that the people you require it from, you won't need it from, because he'll hold your hand and help you come all the rest of your wilted way so that you can end up getting to your destiny today.